So how did you get started with trucking? I saw this lady driving a dump truck and I was like, uh, <laughs> I'm going to just buy a truck. <laughs> Yeah, there's breakdowns and then there's probably accidents too. You see them all the time on the highway. <laughs> breakdowns, accidents, people f each other. What? Uh, yes, it's the it's the wild, wild west. Like trucking is no joke. Um, people steal equipment off of your vehicles. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk trucking today. We got trucking expert Casey Cooper on the show. How's it going? Awesome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm very fascinated with this model. It's it's an older school model, but it seems like you're still it. Yeah. So how did you get started with trucking? Let's see. About 18 or so years ago, I had this epiphany where I was like, okay, I want to make money, but I don't want to have to be the one physically making it. Mm -hmm. And I just had an epiphany one day. I was like... I'm going to just buy a truck. <laughs> and this was like back in 2006. So there were like no female truckers. I didn't even know anybody who owned a trucking company. And I think once I made my mind up, I saw this lady driving a dump truck and I was like, ah. <laughs> and I just kind of followed, you know, that path. I ended up driving for about six years off and on. And here we are two decades later. Wow, so you were driving them yourself at first. Yeah, I had to because in my mind I thought I'm just going to hire somebody and they're going to drive and I'm going to make all this money. But, you know, I had guys like living in my trucks. Um, they had animals in there. They were just not, you know, clean. They were filthy. Yeah. Um, people would quit in the middle of the day and just leave my truck like 30 miles from our yard. Dang. Yeah, so, and then, like, there would be opportunities to make good money, but nobody could go get it. So, mm. I got my permit, and um, I actually hired a guy to just ride with me because you can have a licensed driver if you have your permit. Mm -hmm. And I did that for maybe like a month or two. Okay. And then once I got my license, I just kept driving. Wow. Yeah. And how long were the routes? Because I know some of them are coast to coast, right? Yeah, well, I started with dump trucks. So mm -hmm. dump trucks are, you're not going to go as far as a tractor trailer. You're carrying like... 19 tons of soil or dirt mm -hmm. so i would get up every morning like four go to my yard get the truck work all day and then be off at like three damn yeah so i did that for six years off and on mm -hmm. i mean you're making three four thousand dollars a week so okay it wasn't really bad um but my truck just kept breaking down and mm. i was making the money but i couldn't keep it you know so i had to kind of pivot and get into tractors right so once it breaks down you're probably paying a fat expense right I was breaking down every day because <laughs> I bought a, a converted road tractor, Yeah. which nobody do that, okay? <laughs> You're not supposed to. Those tractors are made to pull. Dump trucks are made to haul. There's a difference. Mm. So I was putting too much strain on the truck and just kept breaking down. So once I kind of pivoted and got into tractors, it worked out a lot better for me. Yeah. So what are what are tractors like? What's that whole model about? Um, same thing, you know, it's all about getting commodities from A to B, mm -hmm. but tractors are going to typically be longer routes um and just depending on what you're hauling like dump trucks are going to be more um construction based like yeah. anytime they're building an arena or a shopping mall they have to go in and level out all that you know grass or whatever was there and then bring in soil to fill it so they can build on it right so it just depends i mean if anybody wants to get into it if you want to be home more i'd say start with dump trucks mm -hmm. if you want bigger like payouts i would look into tractors and how much money would you need to start either one of those, you Ooh. think? Hey, listen, this is not cheap. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have, honestly, like operationally, if you don't have 40, 50 grand, I wouldn't even consider getting in it. Not the traditional way. Mm. You can always own the company and then lease on trucks to your authority, like right. Uber. You know, Uber doesn't own every truck or every car that you get into, mm -hmm. but they get a ride share of that. So... Those are kind of the two models. I mean, if you want to be more admin based and just make like, you know, 15, 20 percent off of whatever they carry. But if you want to like drive and own your own truck, you got to have at least 40, 50 grand. And that's how you make more money when you own them, right? No, not necessarily. I mean, now that I've been doing it for so long, I, in, in retrospect, I wish I had a, did it the other way. I wish I had a, just got the company, had all these guys running under me, making mm. a percentage. Because when their truck breaks down, it's their truck. Right. They've got to fix it. They have the truck note. The way I was doing it, you know, I have all the drivers. I have all the repairs. I have all the truck. 
Shout out to today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Guys, you ever feel like money's just flying out of your account? Well, this app might be able to help you because there's something called subscriptions that are eating at your bank account every single month. And there's apps you don't know about. Delivery apps, streaming services, you name it. You're probably getting charged a monthly fee by a lot of companies and you don't even know. You can see all your subscriptions in one place on the Rocket Money app and you can cancel all the unwanted subscriptions with one tap. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months and negotiate your bills to be even lower by up to 20%. All you gotta do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that basically finds and cancels unwanted subscriptions. They help you monitor your spending and they help you lower your bills. Rocket Money has been a great experience for me personally. They've saved me money, um, hundreds of dollars on bills. They were able to go through all of my credit cards, all of my bank statements, see what I was paying for on a monthly basis. And I found a ton of stuff that I don't even use, honestly. I had an Xbox Game Pass that was being charged monthly. I don't even play games. That one was years old and they also lowered some of my bills. My phone bill and my Wi-Fi bill were pretty high. They were over 150 bucks a month and they were able to cut down on those prices. So all in all, shout out to Rocket Money, great product. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash DSH. That's rocketmoney.com slash DSH. Link will be in the description below. So yeah, you're going to make money, but you're also going to spend it. So in yeah. the long haul, you end up, I mean, and there's, you know, an exception to every rule. There's somebody out there that's got five of their own trucks, you know. But that day is going to come when that truck's going to break down and you got to deal with it. Yeah, there's breakdowns and then there's probably accidents too. You see them all the time <laughs> on the highway. Breakdowns, accidents, people each other. What? Uh, yes, it's the it's the wild, wild west. Like, trucking is no joke. Um, people steal equipment off of your vehicle. Because some of these guys, I mean, they're on a wing and a prayer. They're right. trying to get to that next load. So if they don't have a mirror or battery, they'll just take it off of your truck. So if a guy's in his truck sleep and you're trying to take his battery and it's 3 o'clock in the morning, he's liable to you. And Damn. I've seen it happen. Like, Are you serious? Yeah, I've seen I've seen it happen. Like, oh my gosh! Yeah. So you literally watched that with your own eyes? I mean, I didn't watch it, but like, <laughs> I, I knew a guy who had five trucks, and one of his drivers were, <laughs> and they burned his body and they oh threw my. it in the back of the truck. So I mean, it gets dangerous. Like even when I did drive longer routes, if I ever had to do it a couple times, I would just stay in a hotel because mm. to me, it's just not a place for a woman like on the road at these truck stops taking showers. It just, and sometimes I have my kids with me, so I just, my offset was if I got to drive and I got to make this money, mm -hmm. I'm staying in a hotel. Yeah, I don't blame you. I've never, I never even thought about how dangerous those truck stops could be. It, it's, it, man, it, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, especially these days. I mean, during the pandemic, you were probably crushing it though, right? Yeah, because when things are harder to get, of course, people are going to pay you more money. Yeah. Um, and then over the years, I segued into heavy haul anyways. So I, I learned very quickly that, you know, even though you're making a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a load. I'd much rather make seven thousand dollars a load to right. go eighty miles. Yeah. You know, so I just segued over into heavy haul, and that's kind of where I made my like first hundred grand in like thirty days. Okay, so what is heavy haul? Are so heavy haul is like mostly kind of civil contracts, like bridges, tunnels, highways, arenas, mm. power plants, like big structures. Um, people don't really think about it in their everyday life, but if you're building a stadium or an arena, mm -hmm. you have to have certain structural, you know, commodities and they're going to pay way better. Um, and if you're late or what, what have you, somebody's going to wait for you to bring that in. Mm. You can't like on a construction project, you can't skip. It's all plotted out. Like we need 2,900 beams. we got to have all 2,900. So a lot of people complain, especially truckers like, man, I was late. And especially if anybody knows about Walmart freight, like, if you miss a Walmart load, you might not get unloaded for four days. <laughs> well, if it's Tuesday, you've messed up your whole week because now you got that load stuck on your truck for four days. Yeah. Your week is done. Damn. But if I'm late with, you know, a duct or an impeller that this construction project has to have, they're going to wait for me to get there. Mm. Yeah. And it's going to pay, like five times as much as what the other pays. Yeah, when yeah. they were building the stadium here, they spent billions, so I can imagine people made a lot of money trucking for oh, them. Oh, for sure. Like, br bridges are $200, $400 million easy. Wow. And that stuff has to be hauled in, but we don't think about it like that. So I just got hip, and I just went along with it. Yeah, yeah. and you're f***ing it with those government contracts. You've done millions in those, right? Yeah. How are you able to, like, getting that first one must have been tough, but now it's easier? No, so... That's kind of like a myth, right? You, There's all kind of ways government contracts work. 
but they're all based on need. So if the government needs something, whether or not you put in for it, they're going to come find somebody to do it. Mm -hmm. So there's times I haven't even bid in on anything, but they just called me because there was a need. Wow. And they said, hey, can you give us pricing? So it happens like that. Um, it only took me two months to get my first one. But I'm saying this and I want everybody to like really pay attention. I was at it every day. Mm. Like I was looking at those contracts, reading them every day. Like it's not something you really can kind of do here and there. Yeah. Like if you're in it, it's a lot of reading. It's a lot of comprehension. But you got to be on a search to like find what you're looking for and then respond to the RFP or the RFI, or whatever it is. So, I mean, I was adamantly like searching. And then about two months later, I got a hit. And then about 30 days later, I got another hit. And then it kind of just took yeah. off from there. Yeah. People sleep on those government contracts, man. I did over $10 million in those during the pandemic selling PPE. Yeah. Just selling it to states, to counties. See? It was, I would have never known that. Yeah, but like these government contracts, I like them because they always pay, obviously. You don't got to worry about that, which is great. Right. And, you know, they usually overpay, to be honest. They pay more than most other companies. Yeah, just for me, I mean, when you go into business, you're thinking about, I'd say first you're excited, right? You decide to... Oh, I'm going to do my own thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, well, where are the customers going to come from? Government's always buying every day, all day, all over the world. So, again, if you're really going to do it, it's not something you can just kind of do like, oh, I'm going to do it on Monday and then I'm going to do it the <laughs> three Mondays from now. Yeah. You got to really be in those solicitations, reading sure. that stuff. As soon as I got up, I was on the website looking at them. See? And there's and multiple then, sites. So you got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. And if the average person is a D student and you're not that good at reading and comprehend, you know, comprehending, it's a lot of acronyms. You know, it's a lot of big terms. Um, and that's just base level. Like, I was able to, I mean, I was like in all honors classes and stuff. So obviously, like, I'm smart, right? Mm -hmm. But it's still a world. Like, I don't talk to you in acronyms. We talk regular. Yeah. But I mean, like with anything, like walking, a baby learns to walk. You know, you learn to do it. I learn to do it. And there's levels. Like, my mentor, she's got a $750 million contract. Dang. She hires a rocket scientist for the government. Wow. I don't get that. <laughs> yeah. You know? I, I don't go that crazy with it. But, I mean, it's out there. How did you acquire that mentor? That's something people struggle with, right? Um, she kind of found me in all honesty. I was big on um, a lot of um, like benefits and just um, education resources through mm -hmm. my state and local government. So I was filling out everything I could. I was going to every class. I ended up winning a scholarship for like a business plan and like going to business classes. Mm. And she was actually, she had a contract with the state to do the business plans. Okay. So... I found her and she showed up at my door to actually help me with the business plan. But she too was in government contracts. Wow. And she had worked, um, an older black lady. A lot of times if they make the switch from regular civilian, it's because they're watching all these contracts come through their door. Mm. So she said, you know, I took a break. I asked my husband, would he support me for two years? And now she's, I mean, you think I'm <laughs> she's crushing it. Like to be able to say you signed your name to a contract that big is huge crazy right nine figures and it's guaranteed money since it's, it's the guaranteed. government but i mean she's also f out sometimes like if yeah. she can't find somebody she's pulling her hair out and i don't want that stress so yeah i can't imagine looking for astrophysicists because they're not going to be easily found they're not going to be easily found and they too i mean you don't know but like they're so smart like sometimes they have personal issues also you know so. yeah because when you're that smart you're in your own head <laughs> you're in your own head so i see her when she's you know, got to fill these positions. So it's yeah. kind of scary to me. I'm like, I don't want to deal with that, you know? Yeah, there's a balance with life, like money, stress, like, I don't know. I'm cool with making what I am now. I'm not stressed at all. I'm cool with that. I know I can make more, right. but I'll be way more stressed. I suffer from the same thing. I, I'm like, should I just go harder or should I chill? Yeah. And then there's moments where the momentum picks up and you got to go harder. For so sure. like right now I'm in an expansion um, and I just got to deal with it. But I'm pretty like, I'm the oldest daughter. So mm -hmm. if any older daughters are out there, we're like the family G's. You yeah. know what I mean? You can't really break down our fold. So. <laughs> and I've been doing it for so long. It's like what I used to cry about is now like, psh, next caller. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely seasonal. There's certain weeks or months where you got to grind, but then you could take some lighter for sure. Yeah. And it sounds like education's played a huge role in your life. It has. I think because I grew up in the 80s, a lot of it was go to college, go to college, go to college. But that's not the only education you can get. I mean, my CDL has done more for me than any college degree or, you What's know, a CDL? Commercial driver's license. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, even with that, I took it and, you know, maximized it where a lot of guys would just drive and be satisfied with that. But... I think God kind of just pushes you even when you don't want to be pushed. And 
I'm like, damn, I'd be crying some days. Like, I'm working so hard. Why is this not working out for me? Mm. The whole time I'm being set up for what I am now. I just didn't see it like that then. Yeah, I think the struggles are necessary to get to the next level. They really are. I mean, and even here, I mean, there's going to be more, you know, mm -hmm. but I just, I have a great team that I work with and great people that I work with. Um, and that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And now you got a TV show coming up, right? I do. That is insane. How did that deal happen? Um, so I'm not going to say any names, but if you do your research, you can look it up. Um, the production company that shoots the Kardashians actually came to me and they were like, oh, my God, we love you. We want to do a show with you. Wow. And so this is after my background with government contracts. So I saw the way the government did business and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I got to adapt this model. Right. And so I was like, well, here's the deal. I'll bring you a show and we can partner on it. Mm. And so I did. Um, in three weeks, I casted the whole show, did all the storylines, um, flew to Atlanta, L.A., and Miami, shot the sizzle, um, came back, had a meeting, and she's like, all right, let me run it up the chain. Mm -hmm. Runs it up the chain, and she's like, they love it, but they don't want to partner with you. <laughs> Damn. They don't want to work with you because— and I did my research in those three words. I mean, they they are the biggest production house in the world. I mean, you're talking about Kardashians. Like, yeah, yeah. No, nobody's bigger than them in reality TV. And so once I started digging through who they were and what other stuff they owned, I was like, oh, I get it, but I don't get it, you know? Um, in three weeks also, I hired a showrunner. Mm. So I hired a lady to shop the show for me. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, she would come back and she would say, these networks are saying they've seen your show. Mm. And I'm like, but we don't have an agreement. So I had to get my lawyer involved because they were indeed shopping it without my permission. So that was oh, another issue, right? Wow. But it also made me think, damn, y'all must really want this show bad. So they came in and like, we'll give you five grand an episode. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I shot this whole thing. Like, I spent over $100,000. You want give me 50 grand? Yeah. And they're like, well, we'll give you 9000 an episode and we'll make you executive producer. But then I thought about my partner, Koi. Shout out to you, Koi. Um, who had edited all, you know, he was right there with me. And I'm like, okay, well, what's he going to do? Is he going to bring y'all Cokes on set? <laughs> you know, this is literally like our baby. And then the third part was the integrity of the show. Like, I'm a government contractor. I'm in the 8A program. Like, it's a very prestigious government program. I cannot be on TV getting a drink thrown in my face or swinging, blow, you know, coming to blows. Right. I just can't do that. I don't do that in real life. So um, I, through other channels, ended up, you know, getting it on Roku. Mm -hmm. And it comes out November the 14th. Let's go. Um, so next week. Next week and every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Wow. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah, that must be a whole new world for you. Like, did you film the whole season, basically? We filmed the whole season. And then just through, like, different offerings, different deals, different meetings. Um, you know, everybody's got a culture at their own production house. And mm -hmm. these networks have different ideas about what they want to see. So when we would pitch it, they'd be like, okay, four women in trucking, but who's fighting? Or four women in trucking, but, you know, who's pulling out hair? Like, mm. but we have enough drama with just our own lives, business, our <laughs> kids, balancing it all. Yeah. And then to see us looking like this, I mean, I'm not too bad on the eyes, I <laughs> hope, right? I mean, you don't see a woman who gets getting out of a truck looking like this. And then you get to see our fabulous lifestyle and you mm -hmm. get to see us, you know, whatever we do in our off time. So cool. I'm really um, proud about it. The production quality is amazing. I'm not just saying that because I'm in it. And um, yeah, we're just nice. Fine. I'll check it out. So you're showing all sides of the lifestyle, the good and the bad. Yeah, the good and the bad. Because some of the stuff we deal with, I know for me personally, you wouldn't think that like, damn, she got to deal with that. <laughs> <coughs> or like she's battling with that. Or, you know, that's, you know, on social media, it's like you see one side. Um, so you get to really see like, you know, one girl, she lost her son to like gang violence. Damn. Um, there's another young lady. She has a federal indictment. She's fighting, and we have we have to navigate that. Yeah. yeah. Is it still a male dominated industry? It is, but I think, and I like to take a little credit for inspiring other women to do it. For me, it was like I needed money. You know what I mean? And yeah. I needed like decent money that I could do other things with. Everybody's not going to be a doctor. You know, mm -hmm. you're not going to go to school for 12 years just to come out and have all these school loans. So, just to give people another lane to make money take care of their families to do other things i mean i'm pretty happy about how it's turned out for me yeah and, and other women too that's awesome what's the most you've seen a, someone in trucking industry make um trucking i don't know to be honest because i mind the business that pays me mm. um 
I've done in loads, like three loads that pay me like 20 grand a day. And if wow. you're doing that for four or five months. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> I mean, quick. Yeah. So, I mean, you can definitely, especially if you're going to do the heavy haul, it, it adds up. I mean, but there are loads that pay 40, 50 grand, 150 wow. grand, just depending on what you're hauling. There are only five companies in the world on the government side that haul like mobile homes. Yeah. So you're going to get paid like 10x because there's only five companies that can do it. If the other four are tied up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're the, you're the fifth on the list. You're kind of a shoe in But then you're not moving mobile homes every day either, mm. you know? So you kind of got to balance it out and diversify. So only five companies in the world can transport a mobile home right now? On the government side, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's slim picking. So all those It's five very are, slim. Yeah. They built long-term relationships at this point. So. Yeah, and it's a whole orchestra. Like, you're not just getting in a truck, moving a mobile home down the street. Like, there's certain hours of the day that that mobile home cannot move. Mm. So if you're going from New York to California, it's going to take, you know, a long time because you got you, you can only move certain times of the day because they have to keep everybody safe. Yeah. You got to have permits. You know, there's um, pilot cars involved. It's not just, okay, we're going to get in a car and drive. It doesn't, doesn't happen like yeah. that. Yeah, you know? it seems easy from social media, but there's a lot that goes into there's it. There's a lot that goes into it. But regardless, I still would say the risk is overly commensurate to the, to the well, the reward is overly commensurate to the risk. Yeah, for sure. I see people that try trucking. They don't know shit about it, and they get wrecked. They do, because, again, like, there's like, oh, my boy got a truck, you know? Yeah. But where's your boy doing? Like, <laughs> is your boy, like, stressed out? Is your Can your boy pay his bills? I mean, again... I know that I'm just made of something a little different just because I look like this, but I'm really like a G on the inside. Nice. Even when I look back at what other people complain to me about, if five things happen to you your first month, you're ready to give up, you wouldn't wait for a no way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you just got to have a spirit of not quitting and that it's going to work out. Yeah. Plan A is the plan we're going with, and that's it, and that's all. For sure. But where, people run. Yeah. Where do you think you got that? Were your parents entrepreneurs? No, my granddad is like, or was rest his soul um just they just don't make them like that anymore right. and i mean that runs through us and ain't nothing i can do about it but just grind <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing, it's, it's in me yeah 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 so how long you work in these days you still working like 15 hour days no um i have a staff now so i mean they do a lot of you know the heavy lifting but i mean we have a business model where you know we sign on trucks and we let them go to work. Mm -hmm. We take a smaller percentage. We only take 15% because um, I think that the person that you're subbing the work to has to make most of the money. Right. When you give them a larger percentage, it makes you more attractive. Um, and we also teach them how to get into heavy haul. Mm. So, of course, when you come in, if you have no trailer at all and you just have a power unit, it's not going to pay as well as if you're coming in with an RGN trailer, right? Right. But there's also no companies that's going to teach a regular guy how to get government contracts. No. So that's what makes me different. I want you to stay and be my slave forever. Mm -hmm. You know, come, we'll make money together, and then I'll teach you how to go on, and hopefully you'll surpass me. Oh, so you're helping them get deals, too? Oh, definitely, yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, all the other companies are really, like, gouging, and then they're not teaching them anything. Mm. So... You know, there's a certain type of driver or owner-operator that I'm looking for. Everybody doesn't want to get into government contracts. Everybody wants the money, but nobody wants to do what it takes mm -hmm. to, you know, get the money. So for those that are willing, you know, I have the information, the education, and we'll give it to you. Yeah. And what have you seen in terms of successful people? Like, what kind of traits do they have usually? Um, Definitely, like, big on comprehension and, like, I wouldn't say grammar so much, but just even if you don't understand the technical word, understanding the concept, mm -hmm. um, having an open mind, being, you know, willing to work with others. Um, just those. I mean, you yeah. got to, it has to be beneficial for everybody. Yeah. Win-win for everybody. If you don't have that mindset, then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what are we doing? You could spot a quick nod back because you probably had some terrible drivers in the past. Yeah, and just following directions. People do yeah. not want to read. People <laughs> do not want to listen. I'm sure you know that. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, I would literally be like, hey, do not fill out this application if your truck is, you know, a 2000 or older mm -hmm. and somebody comes with a 1965 <laughs> you know what i mean it's like you Damn. know people just don't read they don't yeah. pay attention you've seen a truck that old mm, maybe in like 1979 that's 73. still super old yeah i'm yeah. sure trucks don't last that long because well tractors are a little bit different the older tractors like the 1970s and 80s were built like for tough oh yeah yeah the newer ones come with all the like electronics bells and whistles which typically go out faster but i mean just 
axle and nuts and bolts. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just repair it and keep keep moving. Yeah. What was it like going on the Breakfast Club? They're in the news heavy these days. Um, it was pretty chill. Like Charlemagne wasn't there that day, thank God. Oh, you don't like him? No, no, no I'm just saying he can be a little controversial. <laughs> which I don't have any controversy. I mean, yeah. Um, but it was cool. I mean, I was happy to just shed light on the industry and women doing it. But mo- more importantly, like the contract, the certifications aspect, because that's what's going to really like differentiate you from anybody else trying yeah. to do it. PPE was was big. I did a bunch of classes on PPE. Yeah. But that was also like a worldwide need, right? Um, typically, if things are kind of just cool and regular in the overall climate, you don't have that big of a crisis. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just putting the information out there so that we can make money and have great lives. Absolutely. I think what you're teaching is so valuable, especially the government contracts, because I didn't even know about them. And that's how I made some really good money and connections. I mean, See? you meet some great people in that space. How'd you get into it? Uh, just saw in the news, everyone was struggling to get PPE. I was like, okay, my mom's from China. Let me see what I can do. Made some calls and then started going on those sites, putting in bids and stuff. Learned all about that space. Wow. Yeah. Pretty insane. But they have governments always buying everything. Always. Like it's not even just trucking. It's like literally everything. Paper clips. Um, anything you can think of. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you can have that supplier connection. Are you money. still doing it? No, because it kind of died down, yeah. I think. No yeah. one wears masks anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. At the time, I thought I was doing the right thing, but, you know. Well, you can always jump back into it. Yeah. yeah. But um, what's next for you? What are you working on and where can people find you? Um, So I'm all over social media at The Compass Circle. And our website is thecompasscircle.com. Uh, the show is going to be out on November the 14th um at 8 p.m eastern standard time and i'm looking to just make more film and tv projects let's go thanks for coming on casey you crushed it thank you thanks for watching guys as always and i'll see you tomorrow